Hi, and welcome everyone. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today live for another Tech Talk Travel Collective My Speed series. This is the five, fifth session that we are hosting here. And today we will be focusing as we do always on the trends and developments in the meetings and events industry. And today we have on the agenda the topic of groups sales and my sales and the role of technology in there. My name is Leah Jordan. I am co-founder at Tech Talk Travel and I'm streaming here live from Berlin in Germany today. So let us know from where you are tuning in, say hi in the comment section and connect with each other and stay with us for the next 40 minutes. It's going to be a very interesting discussion. And let me introduce to you, first of all, my wonderful co-host Rita Machado. Rita Machado is hi Rita. Thank you for hi. joining. Hi, hi Leah. How are you? Good to be I'm here again. Good. Thank you. And you're tuning in from Lisbon and Portugal. So we have already two countries covered here in that session. <laughs> and uh, Rita is Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Great Hotels of the World. That's our partner at Tech Talk Travel, who we co-host these sessions with. And Great Hotels of the World is a leading representation company for independent upscale and luxury hotels. So a lot of competence in there for meetings and events, but also for very uh, individual setups for hotels. And uh, I'm looking forward, especially because today you brought us some insights from your members. Um, we're going to cover that very shortly. And um, as you know, we're not doing this by, this by ourselves. We have super um, fantastic experts joining us today. We have two MICE experts joining. We have one representing the hotelier's perspective, and that's Katja Reich. Katja Reich from Munich in Bavaria. Hi in Germany here. Hi, Katja. Thank you. Hello. Servus from Munich. Grüß Gott. <laughs> Grüß Gott, and take, thank you for taking the time. Uh, Katja is director of MICE and leisure distribution in Northern Europe at Accor. And as I said, she's representing the hotelier's perspective and a very special one, in my opinion, because um, as many of us know, a core group has one of the industry's most diverse and fully integrated hospitality ecosystems. And Katja is actually representing a hotel group with more than 5,000 properties in 110 countries. And as you can imagine, um, putting strategies into place that have to be um, working in many countries with many teams um, across many brands is super interesting, but especially when it comes to technology. So thank you, Katja, for joining and sharing your experiences with us here. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. And then we have from the UK tuning in, and I know he has his Christmas tree up already, as Simon, Simon Dowell. <laughs> Hi, Simon. Greetings, everybody. It's super to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Christmas tree for everybody. I'm sharing the cheer. Beautiful, it's wonderful, really, <laughs> setting the scene for this mm -hmm. uh, session. And Simon, for everyone in the audience, is commercial director at Upmail. And Upmail is a partner for venues and convention hotels um, that help them in digitizing and strategizing their communications and sales. It's a cloud-based sales enabled platform, so um, check them out. And I'm looking forward as well to get your perspective, Simon, because you bring in a lot of expertise with various customers you're working on and probably have a lot of um, hands-on tips on what to consider when putting technology into the sales strategy. So for the next 40 minutes to come, as I said, we will discuss um, trends in uh, MICE and we will especially look into, into the sales um, strategy and how we can leverage technology here. And Rita, I hand over to you. You um, let us know where we start and guide us through the content points. And for everyone in the audience, just make sure below this video stream, you can see the comment section so please also add your questions, your views, and um, your comments. We will make sure to cover them in this uh, session. We try to make it as interactive as possible. Yes, and uh, by saying that, let's start. OK. Welcome, everyone. Glad to be here. Thank you for joining us. Over the next 40 minutes, um, we're going to range through a whole load of subjects. The first one is uh, clearly the changes in consumer expectations regarding um, mice and events. Secondly, how we as hoteliers can do more with less. And the reality is also our clients, agencies are also having to do more with less. How we can do this more effectively, and that's why um, both Katya and Simon are such assets to this talk, because we're going to be um, drawing on them for live examples of how we can all work uh, better and more efficiently. How segmentation has changed. Um, one of the things I thought most interesting was actually Katya's um, title of uh, head of distribution in MICE. Mm. And not many companies have actually moved in that direction. They're still focused on the product. 
So um, it's great to be here with Katia as well. And of course, we're going to be looking at the challenges and opportunities. At the moment in Europe, we're living through challenges, but clearly there are opportunities over the horizon and we're going to be looking at them as well um, because they've also come through the change of segmentation. So um, we do like to bring in some numbers. Uh, one, of the, one of the numbers we have um, to share are, is a survey by Noland, a very recent survey. And um, Noland focuses very much on the planners and buyers. And the reality is, according to Noland, 60% of planners and buyers are unhappy with the responsiveness from hotels. They feel that hotels aren't responding either quickly enough or efficiently enough um, to what they need. They also think that um, it's really important that hotels and venues step up their technology game. And that's really why we've brought Simon on board for this talk is how we can all up our technology game, especially independent hotels. But Katya's also got lots to share with that. And at the same time, they think that um, hotels need to be more flexible with their terms and conditions. Of course, it's easy to say, and when you're on the hotel side, it's very difficult to be even more flexible than you are, but that's the meetings and the planners' uh, perspective. And before going back to the market, I'd just like to share um, some takeaways from a recent survey that we did at Great Hotels of the World with our members. So, uh, Lee, if I could... Um, if we could bring up the, the survey, just very quick, three slides. Um, and this is recent in November. Most of great hotels of the world hotels are in Europe. So this is perhaps Europe um, centric. But the reality is that um, international events for 2022 are coming back, not as, um, as strongly as everyone wishes. So 31% uh, have said that um, because of half of their inquiries are already international for 2022, which is good news for most of our hotels. But the reality is we then have seven out of 10 meetings that are still domestic. And how do we do address those domestic meetings? Because that's clearly changed the, um, the shape and the form of our clients and buyers. They're not all agencies anymore. Um, we see that a vast majority of groups are coming from direct bookings in second place from DMCs, which makes us think that these direct relationships that we have as hoteliers are super important, more than they've ever been. And they're clearly bringing us the majority of our business. If we look at the next slide, um, here we we have the reality that um, the pipeline, the group's pipeline for 2022 is still well, well below 2019. So if we look at Q4 2019, this time last year, uh, two years ago, 46% um, of our hotels pipeline at the moment is between half and three quarters of the 2019 level. So you know, the reality is, uh, is very, is very tough at the moment. Of course, we know that uh, deadlines are very, very short. So we hope that uh, Q1 will bring us a lot more business, but the reality is well below. So we're all fighting for the same piece of business. I don't know, Katia, if this reflects what you're living through in our call hotels, um, or if things are, you know, very different to what you're living through. Yeah. Yeah, Rita, good question. And thanks for sharing those KPIs with us. The good news is we see the same trend. So we see we are on the same page um, for that. And for the pleasure, or what, how do you name it? Staycation and workation. Um, I think this is a good opportunity for us in the future. I mean, look, you don't have to, to be in the office anymore. So you are free to work wherever you are. So also reflecting when conferences and trade fair shows are back, this means you can directly link uh, the stay, the business stay for the participants and expand it to offer them the leisure trip post or after the stay with them. So I think this is a good opportunity we have here inside those KPIs. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We just had one of our hotels in Barcelona do the test with IBTM. There was a trade fair in Barcelona and they really pushed 
their pre-stay, pre-fair and post-fair leisure rates and proactively pushed them out to every single person they had booking through, through those days. And they had a pickup of one in three. So it was actually very interesting how they managed to influence um, the duration of the stay by going out. Um, you know, they probably had them loaded on their website anyway, but they proactively reached out to clients that had booked over their dates and they saw the pickup. So we definitely think there's there's more than a message out there. There's business. People are wanting to stay for leisure as well. It's not just a, a bucket list. And and also, you know, we've got our hotels saying that, um, you know, that uh, th over a third of their, uh, seven out of 10 of their inquiries are asking for more leisure and activities information. So before, our hotels would probably reply with an inquiry and they would add on any leisure and outdoor activities. And now the inquiries are coming in with that request, which is a very different kettle of fish altogether. So um, the ability of the hotel to quickly pivot with that information for every single group and personalize that offering is, is crucial. And, mm -hmm. you know, as you were saying, Katia, there is business out there to be won. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. And, um, and we've seen this last six months that the leisure market has really saved the day in most of our hotels and teams have just had to pivot as quickly as possible. We've got just a little takeaway on food and beverage um, because food and beverage has been especially challenged by health and safety. And what they've done is they've uh, over 53% have increased the staff served meals in buffets. So of course that's a huge challenge for the teams, but at the same time, it's enabled them to increase prices explaining that they've had um, more teams on the ground to make it safe. And some of them have actually used outside catering to be able to complement their offering. So um, hotels have pivoted very, very quickly. Um, and we, we really think that there's a huge opportunity. If we can go over to technology, the last slide, um, here we see that um, at least in our hotels, um, very few of them are actually um, able or thinking of a specialist tool for group proposals. So they're still working in the old system, RFPs. And Simon, um, love to have your take on this. How do you see this happening um, with hotels? Do they, what do they need to do to be able to work more effectively with technology? Great. Well, well, thank you very much. Uh, super insights. Really, really, really useful. It's nice to have that. There's a there's, there's parallels between international brands and independents. Uh, that's that's great to hear uh, in, in Europe as well. Um, what's technology? What, what what you know in terms of what are they what are they looking for? Let's take it back a little bit, perhaps to um, the, the the customer expectations and what perhaps has changed. Because it's, I would fundamentally say it's the customer buying experience that shifted um, over these last two years in, in terms of how we as consumers, all of us, um, are, are buying our products. And fundamentally, we're far more accustomed now to, um, to, to making purchases online. Um, and of course, that transitions nicely into the way that um, we as consumers will also want to buy our meeting or event or wedding or... Or, or, or social party or Christmas mm. party, um, and it is it's this it's this transition ultimately of uh, an online experience all the way through to an offline experience, but it doesn't just stop there. It doesn't move from online to offline. It really transitions um, back and forth, online, offline, online, offline, and I think that's where the technology uh, really plays a, a positive part uh, in terms of how hotels can enable the sales teams um, to convert more inquiries fundamentally, make it easier for the uh, for the customer to say, absolutely love what I've just seen. That's beautiful. It's exactly, uh, that's completely aligned with uh, my online experience. It's all on brand, it's on point, it's on message. The steep, but the, the, the big piece here is, is the, um, is, is how, um, the salesperson and the, the importance of a salesperson delivers value 
delivers value within the sales process to respond to those customer inquiries, recognize what they've seen online and deliver this value through their knowledge, but also the transition of this digital content that they've got that, um, that, that they have at their fingertips to deliver to that customer, mm -hmm. to allow the customer to be able to make a, a decision quicker and more efficiently. Um, and not only when they're feeling like this is going to go ahead because it's a, a juicy booking every single time. Um, and it may well be that you've got, um, you know, a technology stack already set up for online meetings. That's taken care of, absolutely. But it's the big pieces of business or the complex bookings that requires a human-to-human -human, uh, transition. Yeah. How can we get um, a better flow of communication between a seller and a buyer and get the buyer to fall in love and make an emotional connection with what they want to buy? Yeah. I think that is the key piece. Um, and, and, what, and what the customers want, the customer expectations. They want speed. They want fluidity. Um, they want fluidity between what they've. They may have a conversation with. I don't know a conversational com commerce. They might have a chatbot experience online, all the way through to okay. They start to engage with um, the salesperson, and that salesperson bringing it all together and making it um, relevant and precise yeah. for the uh, yeah. for the customer. Yeah, I agree, Simon, and maybe also just to add, so what we experience in this journey, because it's complicated and you are not really the expert of everything, we did, we experienced that the customers are willing to co-design, right, with you together and with the mm -hmm. supplier, and I think this was, the, the, we saw a booster in this willingness of, of co-designing, agree, but let me just, with the customer expectation, let me just to add a really basic one, I can tell you today, it also starts with the VLAN power in the hotel. We still have some hotels, not in our core, of course, but in the <laughs> landscape, uh, where we see that, I mean, look, customers have three devices in the hotel. We have hybrid meetings. We have, there's a lot of traffic more in the lines. So also maybe a recommendation, the first recommendation, please check the VLAN connectivity and the power. Yeah, the is a huge hotel. topic, yeah. Yeah, this is a key demand from, from customers as well. Yeah. 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 And I have a question for you, Katja, in terms of customer profiles, because that's super interesting. Um, you mentioned before that there's like several profiles of customers, right? So we were faced with like more professional ones that have totally different expectations towards the sales process. But then um, also some data from Nolan recently shared shows that most of the meetings are smaller meetings booked now, and that's usually coming from small, mid-sized enterprises, right? So probably, uh, just a guess, I'm not sure if it's true and if you observe the same thing, but probably that's like less professional event planners that have totally different approaches on what they expect and what they need as a consultant from a hotel yeah. sales team. Yeah. What would you share there? The, the, there's a different consulting service. So we, we mm -hmm. in our core, we use the word managed customers, where, you know, there's a travel management behind. It's we, it's 100% nearly organized and automized. And then, yes, we know recovery business, it's everywhere, the small, medium enterprises with the business. So the, the, the strategy is here. We have to understand their booking channels. So where do we catch up the business? And this is really different. Um, and for us, what does it mean? We have to look for the solutions to attract both of them. Maybe unmanaged, it's smart to shift them to the website, guide them through with chatbots and to present the products where the managed ones is, we know the, already the solutions and this is a kind of negotiations and doing connectivities with them, right? So this is, um, again, um, a, a rethinking of how to attract um, the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um Simon, how do you think that technology can help this new um, customer that we're all uh, facing, this less professional or at a stretch, someone who's doubling up doing three different jobs in one and who is, by the way, organizing meetings on the side or these social events that Katya was talking about, yeah. um, clearly a less experienced meeting planner or event planner. How, how does technology work that way? Um, well, um, I, I put myself in the customer shoes um, as, a, as a buyer, um, as, um, as, a, as a meeting planner. Um, and I could be an experienced person or I could be, uh, an, a, you know, someone just booking a, a birthday party. What would I want fundamentally? And that is to have a seamless um, uh, transition of, of communication between that hotel. I want it to be easy to be able to make a booking. 
Um, but I want to be able to speak to somebody and I want to be able to have that conversation to be um, obviously um, authentic. I would like to be able to um, believe that I'm speaking to someone with knowledge and experience. But when I go ahead and make a, uh, a purchase, I would like to be able to have it digitalized. So I'd like to be able to probably have my proposal looking and feeling like I've seen online. So a really media rich um, sales experience, perhaps Perhaps I'm, I can't ab I'm not able to go for a site inspection, so I would like to be able to organize a, a Zoom call or a FaceTime uh, chat for my site inspection. Um, I'd like to be able to speak to the GM, perhaps, or I'd like to be able to speak to whoever it is, the head chef, if necessary, just to ask a few questions. Ultimately, I'd like to be able to manage my own buying experience with what I'm experiencing with other uh, products that I'm buying out there. And it should be no different, really, for hotels, because we're all consumers in our own way. Um, so that's that. It's that um, that continuity ultimately of the, the the story and the messaging I'm getting back from the hotel. And, one, and going back when I want to make a transaction, I'd like to be able to have my contract or my agreement. I'd like to sign it electronically. I'd like to be able to make a payment. Of course, I'd like to be able to make a payment online or a bank transfer very very easily. We want to make it as frictionless as possible. Um, and it's not just necessarily about the technology. It's really dovetailing all yeah. of the ways that we want to communicate and bringing in all these facets to make it easier for that customer to say, I want to book the Accor Hotel, I want to book the Marriott Hotel, I want to book the, the, the Palm in, 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 um, in, in, in Dubai, for example. Uh, wherever that person wants to go, it needs to be as easy as possible for them to say yes, yeah. because guess what? The hotel next door is doing it. Um, mm. and, and that's it. They've got to be quicker, yeah. they've got to be faster, yeah. and they've got to be sincere in terms of what they're sharing. And the content itself is critical, um, you know, from, from online experiences through a virtual tour, through to social tables in terms of what they can see and planning their event. It needs to be available at their fingertips and threading it all together in a platform that just looks professional. Um, and what can help a salesperson is getting insights in terms of how that customer is actually engaging with that communication. You know, when are that when's that customer opened up that email? When have they actually looked at the content? Why is that important to the salesperson? Well, it puts them in a position of strength. It puts them in a position of power and knowledge. I know my customer is interested in me. I better get on that customer very, very quickly and, and confirm the deal. So I guess that's how technology can help in, 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 in that sense, when there is this human to human interaction uh, and making yeah. it as easy for that mm. sales team and that salesperson to deliver. Yeah. yeah, I agree, Simon, but, but but I was still facing the challenge. Um, I agree, technology is here to support. The challenge, what we are facing is always, if you don't have a cultural program in parallel, right, uh, booster adoption and how to use it, this is also a training scope or the acceptance. So if you don't have it in parallel, it's a challenging thing to, to make the product or the solution fly. So whenever we have a conversation with our partners, um, corporates, agencies, and well, as well as technology supplier, everything is really linked also to understand what they invest in, in this cultural um, change management um, element to, to be successful here. Yeah, I think people that we are questionable there. I think people without a questionable doubt are, are king. You know, you've got to invest in your people. You need yeah. to understand what the, what, the, what the team needs in order to be able to, um, but ask the team fundamentally, what is it that they need to be able to, to, to drive conversion? What is it they need to be more effective? And what are the tools that we're using independently uh, ourselves? Um, so but great point. Um, and, and I think that is uh, yeah. something we can continue to talk yeah. about. Yes. And, <laughs> ask, and ask the customer and ask always the customer, just co-design with the customers. When Agreed. we think it, this is doable, I can tell you customers will tell you, no, this is not very yeah, in not my mind. That's, that's, that's a great term for yeah. that process, right, to just yeah. include them in there. Alexandra Weber is joining us. She's um, from Linden Hotels and Me and All Hotels in Germany, a group that's very um, active in the MICE department as well. It's worth checking out their website, how they're doing it. I think they're doing a great job there. Thank you, Alexandra, for joining. And she just uh, added this comment, and she's saying that uh, Wi-Fi and WLAN uh, tech technical options are certainly a basic requirement uh, for customers, that's for sure. And however, and I think that's a very interesting point, and kind of ties back to what Katya just mentioned and uh, pointed out is we also have to consider that good technical conditions are also required on the hotel side so that automation yeah. can be offered. There are still many hotel employees in the operational departments who do not have a PC with a camera or even a mobile device from the company that they could use. So 
uh, Katya, what's your observation there? Is, is that uh, reality? That, um, w w how would you talk about that? Or is this a challenge as well, you see? Would you agree? Yeah, so you see, I have a laptop with a camera, so this works, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's face it. So in the hotel, they do have the fixed uh, um, computers in the in the office. If you would like to do a site inspection, you have to need, you need a laptop, maybe to go to a meeting room where it is quiet and to do the session. This is uh, uh, we are facing this kind of situation. And yes, how what do I need? Uh, a specific microphone, a specific camera. This is um, also a, a development field. It's a room for improvement, I think, for everyone. Not Absolutely. only the heads, not only the executives yeah. are in the headquarters, also the hotel staff. Yes, yeah. it's still seen, you know, a tablet is still seen as some kind of a luxury. And even things like, you know, a WhatsApp account, a company social media account that you can interact with, even that you know, your company Skype or, or what we were talking about, you know, WhatsApping with your clients, it's, it is a different mindset that we have to go into. And at least in our hotels, there are some that really are ahead of their game, uh, absolutely, and that do really good um, video show arounds, very spontaneous, very human, um, very lively, um, human to human show arounds. But um, the most of them are still selling as they were three years ago. And the way that we see the market moving, there's a huge gap between the demand and the, the reply that our hotels are able to give. Um, and of course, with, with smaller sales teams, you know, there, there's no secret. I would, I would also argue that the opportunity actually lies in the younger generation coming on board, um, even for internships, and leading the way in terms of technology, demystifying technology. Um, but I agree with Katya, it's a cultural mind shift. Mm. Absolutely. Just, just to, on that note, if I may, uh, just add in, a, 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 I guess, a couple of stats. Um, this is by Gartner, marketing um, uh, leading um, Gartner. 77% uh, of B2B buyers state that their latest purchase, purchase was complex or difficult. You know, and that, and that you know, we're in the B2B space, we're, we're organizing meetings and events, we're communicating with corporate buyers, but, but also meetings and events falls into that area. It's complex, it's clunky, and it's, it's you know, how much do we want that business? What's the value to the hotel? So if we can't invest in, 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 in tablets or we can't invest in, 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 in some small things that, that actually a drop in the ocean when it comes to the, the bigger picture in terms of what does the M&E spend represent for that hotel? I think that's quite an important piece. And another one, the Salesforce did a survey recently, 80% of their customers say that experience experience is as important as the service stroke of product. It's the experience of that sales mm -hmm. process. How can we deliver that experience and make that customer have a great experience from its online to offline uh, and, and that engagement with the most valuable person is the salesperson. How can we... Uh, um, enable that person, that salesperson, to be as efficient, as effective as possible. Just a few interesting things in terms of like getting the most out of the sales mm -hmm. team. I think yeah. that's also um, a perfect link to how is the, the employee structure in the hotels, right? We have operational um, guys and we need the technical guys, right? Today, operational guys have to do everything. And I think, yes, we are facing um, a challenging situation in hotel hospitality industry to attract uh, employees uh, to work in or for hotels because we are digital and we need those um, those guys. So and maybe you could also adapt your business model. A four weeks work working um, so four days working week. Um, it's you don't have to be in the office and you can work remotely at home because you have access to my systems. I think this is also a job we have to do in hospitality to to feed also the the customer expectations. And let me just add for the complexity, um, Simon, what you um, uh, shared with us and changes in customer expectation. 
Uh, we saw with the pandemic restrictions. It's it's mm -hmm. tough for our hotels to answer for our proposal because my t a conference room in the past for 100 people is maybe only for 30 people, but I still received the same requests like in the past. And we identify that there are legal rules, restrictions, but we saw that um, corporates and agencies have even more tougher restrictions yes. uh, than the government. So this is to requalify a proposal that's a very tough job to do nowadays um, on, a, on a hotel side, to be <laughs> quick in, in answering. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good point, right? Because that's maybe something you didn't even have uh, like clearly on mind when times changed. And the question from Michael Cointia, he's joining us uh, another time. Thank you for joining again, Michael. He's a, a regular <laughs> visitor of our sessions. I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, he has a question for both of you, Katja and Rita. I say, Katja, you just uh, maybe continue because you were just at the topic. He asks, if you see adjusted approach to my sales by your teams regarding the shaky corona situation or the, the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, apart from just going out there and chasing what's left, um, and if you feel that there's tools that are useful um, apart from video calls, and that's that's also interesting. Is there is there best practice you can share, like tools you actually have in place that helped you get in, in touch with customers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, just to close the Aqua story for two elements, maybe. So we really purchased um, uh, virtual, the real virtual site um, um, uh, tools in the market. And for Aqua, that means I have to cover from IBIS to, to Raffles, a solution, and to cover different regions. So and, and to, to, to provide a flexibility for my hotels which solution is the best for me. So here uh, we did a, um, a huge investment. And the second one is also we saw, this is not technology, but with the safety and flexibility. So we launched our All Safe label. Um, and, and safety is still key for hotels. If you would like to attract them, please invest again in, in safety um, and tell it to the audience. Use LinkedIn, use social selling. Tell the audience what you are doing. That's my key recommendation. Um, and maybe also have a look on um, Mikael. How do you sell your space, your open space in the hotel? Is it really maybe the meeting or something else in future? Yeah. Question mark. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, for great hotels of the world. We what we did um, was we strongly, obviously, encouraged our hotels to use the available technology because in the middle of this of the worst of the pandemic, no one was seriously investing on an independent level, and in fact, the most effective results were using the technology that people had with tablets. Um, with really informal but well prepared um, tours of their hotel, so it doesn't it didn't mean that they didn't prepare them. They had to almost write a script for showing the hotel, but they made it very human by bringing in the team members to the client, even team members that they normally wouldn't bring. So they were calling on people in reception to say hello. They were calling on people in behind the back of house in the kitchens mm. to show the safety measures, as Katya was saying, that they were putting in place. And, you know, we, we carry on doing checks of their websites saying, look, you've done all this investment, but you're not telling anyone you're doing it. And constantly coming up with fresh uh, news on how they're, they're protecting their clients. We think it's the main, the main goal at this moment because you can't create demand where there isn't demand yet. Mm -hmm. That's a personal style. personal style, agree. We have a, we had an Ibis property in Amsterdam. They, they, they just do it via an, um, a selfie stick and do the yeah. uh, uh, site inspection, and that works. Perfect. Authentic, yeah, I love right? it. It's authentic. Yeah. Authentic, yeah. it's what Correct, Simon yeah. was saying, yeah. I mean, yeah. That was one of our most successful. Yeah. Simon, shows. what's your experience with your customers? Yeah. What was the question? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see with your customers because you probably have a very diverse group that you're serving. Like, and yeah. what is the what is their approach there? Like, I mean, only newsletter campaign is not is not the the only channel. Most likely, is, is there some best practices you can share where they say that that really worked well in the past months? Well, twofold. Without a questionable doubt, is be proactive. Um, still communicate. Let your customers know and your business partners know exactly what you're doing. There's obviously technology in, in order to be able to help you to do that. Send out personal communications you know, in batches um, that will enable, enable the salesperson to be able to um, see how um, you're, they're engaging with you. 
the ability to follow up to it really drives the sales process. But from a, you know, that's creating, that's creating demand or nurturing those relationships, letting the customers know. And we see many, many of our clients using our technology for that to be able to really cultivate and nurture those relationships by sharing content of what we're doing, um, what be it, you know, the safe label, um, you know, in terms of driving best practices, reinforcing what the brand or the hotel represents. And let's face it, it's individual hotels still operating by themselves or even with a large brand or they're being represented by a global sales team. Um, and it's using the best practices of what that hotel or that brand is doing consistently and sharing it. Um, so, you know, when demand comes back, great, they're, foot, they're, they're, they're front of mind. And from a hotel perspective, it really is leveraging all the resources, the digital assets together, organizing, take time to really understand um, what the segments are key, you know, what segments are really important, be it social, be it wedding, uh, be it corporate, and really they might have the efforts to, to they best. Might yeah, have absolutely. Yeah. And, they, and they have changed. Many, many have changed. Um, you know, I was talking to a, a hotel only a few days ago, um, a central London hotel, and, and they've all of a sudden changed the way that they are selling their ballroom for, for, for weddings at weekends. Typically, they'd outsourced it. Now they're, they're realizing that they want to focus on that ballroom and sell it for themselves at a higher higher level. So it's an adjustment of the sales strategy at a property level and having the tools to be able to cascade that through all of the sales team. So it's consistently delivering this message. And I think the key word here. Is, is, did only I lose him or uh, did we all lose him? It be relevant. Oh, there he is. Okay, he's back. Okay. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, there. Okay, perfect. Well, I take that chance to move to a question from Afonso Magales. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Afonso, mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining. And he giving, he's giving hugs, hugs to Rita. Um, because he worked with you and he says hi to Andre, but the question is for Katya. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Do you feel like hotels post pandemic will invest in their food and beverage menus, both mice and individual, um, and the quality of food? Because um, his point of view, I guess, here in Lisbon and Portugal is that a lot of hotels close doors and the ones that managed to stay open mm -hmm. were the ones with strong F&B quality. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your take on that, Katya? Um, yes, I mean, the, the, this. I will um, um, shift the will invest, they mm -hmm. have to invest. So that's, <laughs> also, that's clear, right? So what really happened during the pandemic? I mean, let's, let's, let's face it, uh, that was an economic decision to close restaurants where there was no, there was no demand there. And just consider when you would like to have uh, a nice menu, maybe it's for the restaurant, Uh, around your neighborhood than the hotel restaurant to choose during a pandemic. So um, to, to, to conclude or to make a, a long answer short is we will invest, of course, in F&B. We, we have to reflect new restrictions or the new customer expectations. We have a key strategic department existing. Uh, they're really focusing, understand the trends, F&B trends, how to implement in our hotels. And again, also here to reflect the differences between Ibis restaurants and the Raffles and Paris restaurant as well. So, of course, yes, it's it's key focus because Trefpa, total revenue per available room, this it's is finally exactly here. Be there. Yeah. And yeah. suddenly we talk revenue management. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another question from Pedro, Pedro Colaco. He's from Guest Centric and also from Great my boss. Yes, okay. he's our friend for other collective sessions. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for joining us. And he has a question for you as well, Katja. And it's all about 2022 plans. Um, how do you adapt them uh, because of the latest wave of travel restrictions? And do you expect to be back to normal at any point in time? Or do we have to live with this uncertainty for the future to come? Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a mixture of everything, I would say. But let's, let's um, start from the basic. I think for next year, let's face it, we have to be patient with us and with our employees 
and we have to be focused. So whenever we, we define our strategy, so what is the expiry date of a strategy? I think it's good to have an annual strategy in place, but then we reflect on a quarterly basis if the strategy really works out or you have to adapt it very quickly because sometimes we tend to stay on our annual strategy and, and miss the momentum to adapt it. So for 2022, um, we are always comparing it to 2019. We don't expect to be 100% already there next year. Uh, but I can tell you, we expect that 70, 80%, that's, that's uh, a, a roadmap to catch up the business here. Um, and if it's leisure, then leisure, um, the, the, the smaller events. So we are positive also for next year. And we have to live with this uncertainty. What, what is the, the, the message behind is the key skills, what you need is patience, uh, agile, quick decisions, and, and um, maybe also had, have some fun with your team. And don't forget the teams, because this is also money question, to yeah. invest. Yeah. 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 And then we have an, another comment, and I think it ties also in nicely. And maybe, Simon, you can add some uh, observations as well from your end. Is Marlena Rilska. Thank you for joining and tuning in. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, she's saying that with international COVID restrictions still in place, incentive and social groups are more in demand than meetings, business meetings, but they are less comfortable with technology, RFPs, etc. cetera. Um, first of all, is it like that? And secondly, um, what, what would you say? Is there a workaround? Simon, yeah, you absolutely, 100%. Yeah, reply to the customer how they feel comfortable. You know, it's so important to be able to respond to that customer um, in the environment and the, the, with, the, with the way that they want to communicate. Um, I think that's critical. Uh, if they if they want a phone call, they want a phone call. If they want a long email, they want a long email. You know, how much do you want the business? Fundamentally, you've got to qualify that piece of business. Um, so if they're less comfortable with technology, don't enforce it on them if they don't want to sign a contract electronically. I spoke to Cambodia today. They don't, in, in the Middle East and Africa, well, the Middle East, um, they don't use electronic signature. It's CHOP. It's the same in China. So it's adapting the way that, that the, the customer is buying and making, going back to the customer buying experience and the buying process, adapt to how that customer wants. To your point, mm -hmm. Katya, be agile um, and be, uh, be fluid in the way that you are able to respond to those, to those customers. Um, but in principle, <laughs> if you've got a framework that can, can house all of your your sales story together and make it easier for, you, for your salesperson to be able to respond to these inquiries, be it, a, be it a, a meeting convention or be it a wedding or be it a Christmas party or be it a, a complete hotel buyout for the JW Venice, you know, make sure you've got the tools to be able to give to your team to be able to, they can do it consistently and effectively every time. Um, I, I, that's my answer. I hope it helps. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Frida, would you like to add something to that? Yes. On the, I, yes. I think um, although incentives, um, if they're you, if they're organised by agencies, may be less friendly with technology because they're more used to doing things the old way, I would say that social events like weddings are actually a lot more technological because um, weddings have online platforms already, private ones. Invitations are all electronic. Wedding lists are all electronic. So I think I think there's a window of opportunity here to bring in that not just the technology but the culture, as Katya was saying, yeah. into our way of working. Um, because I think again, as Simon was saying, we have to adapt to customers. You know, if I have a customer for a group who says, "Oh, I, I I'd like to open up a WhatsApp group so we can communicate with the three people involved," because we have to pivot very quickly with decisions as as you know as things evolve then i just have to open up a whatsapp group to make yeah. sure that we're all uh, alive and ticking as the client wants um so i would say we're in a flux in terms of technology and um also answering to Alfonso's question we had a we had a tech talk traveler my speed just on fnb and i think fnb is an area where technology imagery marketing is just out there it's we're not using it more because we don't want to but our clients who are sharing the, our dishes on instagram while they're ordering um they want us to be online and they want us to manage all these distribution channels for restaurants that we're not doing you know 
totally, Rita. Interesting fact. Interesting fact on that. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, Neil Patel, another marketing guru uh, known for um, you know digital content, um, and and it's a, it's effectively a, you know how much do we invest as hoteliers in our um, uh, marketing collateral? I worked in Shanghai at a, at a, at a hotel, an opening hotel. We spent thirty thousand. Um, US dollars on a photo shoot, uh, an incredible amount of money. It was unbelievable. 60 to 70 percent of marketing, marketing content that's created actually never gets used by the sales team. Yeah. yeah and that's that is, right? you know, that's crazy, right? Yes. Leverage the, re- make sure that your sellers have got the digital content available at their fingertips and they can slice and dice and they can put into whatever proposal, whatever communication they need to, to be able to make it meaningful and be that whatever they can pull from their social feed or whatever it is that they've got from a brand perspective. So we've got this continuity of this online to offline, online to offline. So that customer goes, I want to do business with these guys because they're, 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 they're consistent. And I think that is cri- critical ultimately in the way the hotels are going to win more business, um, consistently delivering uh, this reinforced message of what, what the customer can see above the line in terms of a marketing perspective, all the way through down to um, a confirmed event and hopefully repeating and repeating and repeating. And sharing. Absolutely. <laughs> and sharing and sharing at the event. And, and in f and I think there's the world of opportunity in terms of investing in, in menus, for instance, because we have to pivot so quickly in restaurants. You know, you have to open and close and open and close and your menu changes and all this local produce means that your menus have to change almost daily in order to be more efficient. And so for me, technology is really the only way, you know, and partnering up with the right people for that to happen. So definitely, definitely. Um, uh, Simon, I have one question for Simon. Oh, go on then. Hope we got the answer. I just just wanted to point out, we're we're online now. Just get for 45 minutes now, and it shows the topic is super oh complex. Goodness. And we, we covered now, we, we touched on f and touched on revenue management, we touched on the marketing, we touched on the sales. And I think it's it's super complex. So if I imagine myself being a hotel, you're listening to that, I think I would appreciate just if I didn't do much with my sales strategy yet until now to this point, what would you three say? Like what would be where to start and what is the three key points to really focus on when you want to optimize your sales strategy for the coming year? How do you? How about you start, Simon, and then we uh, move to Katya. Well, I, I'm going to do a two points. If I number one, take great care yes. of your team. Well, better. Take great care of your team. Your team will take care of the business. If you invest in your team, they will absolutely take care of the business. Make sure that the team have got the processes, the resources, and the technology in order to be able to do their job efficiently. Not only when they're feeling good, not only when business is good, not only when um, they're they're, they're feeling happy or they've got a good leader, consistently delivering great sales processes so they they can consistently deliver an outstanding service. And it's that outstanding service that is going to really create the point of difference. Uh, So that's just a forensic look ultimately of, of, uh, of, of the team and making sure that they've got the resources. Second to that, critical though, do an audit. You know, perform a sales audit, perform a, an audit on the sales process. Um, what's the hotel story? Is it unique? Is it consistently being told to all the right segments? Um, and is it balanced and aligned with what that hotel represents? Um, and, and then I guess two final things within that. Are you relevant? And is it easy to do business with you? And I would ask, then that all part of that audit process. Are you easy to do business? Have you got a sales story that works? Is it, is it got a, is it, is it got the stickability piece? And I think once you've got all those components together, I think you're going to have a happy sales team are going to be consistently delivering uh, time and time again. Um, and it's worth looking at some technology out there as well. That's my little pun. Perfect. Thank you, Simon. That was that Thank was you. good tips. And Katya, what would you add from your perspective as a re- representing a hotel group with so many brands yeah. and, and countries? Yeah, um, I think nothing really new, but it's always to repeat it again. So understand your recovery business for next year. Set up your strategy, a long-term strategy, and break it down also in mid- and short-term initiatives. So what you really need here on solutions, so it makes easier for you to, to source then or to, to pitch your uh, the, the, the solutions you would need for you as a 
individual hotel or maybe also as um, a little company or a hotel chain and be gracious with yourself to yourself for next year mm -hmm. right so you have to be a risk manager risiko manager as well so the pandemic won't won't disappear so um just relax a little bit focus the trends the demand adapted and and keep going keep be, be focused and please have fun mm. try to have fun yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> rita is there something you would add like oh. based on your experience with greater towns of the world and your customers well we've um as a collection of independent hotels um we really focus on the authenticity of each hotel and making sure that our hotels tell their story because they are unique. Um, on the other hand, I agree with Katia that we have to be consistent. And I would um, go back to basics in the sense that I would look at the clients that brought us business over the last two years, the markets that brought us business segments and geographical markets and where there's um, openings because of course if we focus on the markets that are closed we're all going to go downhill but there are markets that aren't closed there are segments that are working so I think we have to focus on those and work those consistently yeah. simply and just keep at it you know we, we do have markets where sales events are happening we've been doing them We need to focus on those and not get dragged down by all the negative side, because if, if we do, we're just not moving forward. But um, agree with both of you, Katia and Simon, um, each to his own, that, you know, teams and processes, definitely, um, in those orders. And I think really that, that wraps up that we just have to get down to it and have fun while we're at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's, that's what I love, like have fun, co-design, be agile and um, just yes. focus, right? And just take it maybe sometimes step by step. And for everyone in the audience, thank you so much for joining and having joined us, having given us your time and your comments and questions. And make sure to reach out to Simon, Rita and Katia as well. Um, I'm sure they're happy to connect and to continue conversations or answer further questions or just pollinate ideas about how to optimize sales and mice. And well, um, as it's the last session for this year, right, Rita? It's I guess that, that's the last yes. one for 2021. <laughs> Time flies when you're oh. having fun. Um, yeah, we have the Christmas tree already. So just in the name of everyone at Tech Talk Travel, and also I just allow myself to say that for Great Hotels of the World as well, we're wishing everyone um, a wonderful festive season ahead. Simon put the scene for us already with his Christmas tree and uh, a healthy and um, successful start into the next year. And as uh, Katya said, Just be gracious with yourself and remember technology is your friend. And yeah, I'm looking forward to welcoming many of you back next year, hopefully here to another session. And thank you so much, Katya and Simon and Rita for taking the time to make this uh, work here. And yeah, looking forward to the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.